this is Adam Thomas with Art Design Labs and today I'm going to do a really quick tutorial on how to create a family that's parameter driven. Um, it'll just be a generic family. We're going to do a column, a freeform kind of column, something simple just so you can get your hands into actually what a family is. So let's start out by going to File, New. We're going to go to Family and we're just going to open a generic family. So scroll down to you see Generic Model. Generic model is just the basic, basic, basic family. It's just the bare bones of what a family can be. So you can model anything in a generic family. You just have to, have to add in a lot more information. So today we're just going to do a column. And that's what I like to do is I like to first decide what kind of parameters or different dimensions I want the column to have that I can control. So for this one, we're going to do a depth, a length, and a height. So to start off, we want to hit reference plane, and we're going to draw four reference planes right now. We're going to draw one above the center line, one below the center line, one to the left of the center line, and one to the right of the center line. It doesn't matter where you draw them, just kind of make them even, just for the sake of making everything look better. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is actually add in the parameters. Parameters aren't hard at all. You just have to do them in a correct order and know what you're doing before you actually try. So to do that, it's just dimension. So we click the dimension tool and we're going to dimension outside line to outside line and then we're also going to dimension outside to middle to outside. And we're going to do the same thing with the bottom lines. Outside to outside and then outside, middle, outside. And we're going to drag them up. Alright, so right now we have two sets of dimensions they haven't turned into parameters yet two sets of dimensions on each kind of line so one vertically and one horizontally and you may be asking why we put two sets and that's because on this bottom set the one I clicked all three lines up here where it says not equal it's a little be not equal sign it's kinda of hard to see you want to tell that to be equal and you want to tell it to be equal on both of the cases now the reason being is because in Revit it's going to reference these two middle lines mainly. These are the strong references of this model. The references we just added are weak references, meaning secondary references. Um, and by keeping them equal, any dimension you add is going to stay centered around this point in the center, which is great. So if you're doing squares, columns, you know, beams, rectangles, circles, you're doing something freeform, and it would always be referenced around this central point. So you can always find the center of an object like that. If these center points weren't there, you wouldn't be able to find the center. Okay, so to add a parameter, it's as simple as turning a dimension into a parameter. So right now we have this dimension is 2 foot 4 inches. So we're going to right click on that and say edit label. We're going to pull down the drop box and say add parameter. This is going to be our length parameter. Under group parameter, we're going to say that this is a dimension. And you're not going to change anything else, you'll just hit OK. And as you see, now it says length 2 foot 4 inches. Alright, I'll show you what to do with that in a little bit. But the next one needs to be depth. So same way, we're going to do right click. We're going to say edit label. Drop down box. Add parameter. This will be depth. This can also be width for a lot of people. But I like to say depth. You'll get it confused in a later and later families you're creating. Alright, this is also a dimension. There again, change nothing else, just hit OK. Alright, so you may be wondering what that just did in terms of making this family work for you. And I'm about to show you. We'll go over here to Family Types. Click on it. Now we have a Length and Depth Dimension Parameter, which is what we wanted. So in our case, we're making a column, and I like to just go ahead and put in what length and depth or width or height the column is going to be before I start drawing the column. So for this one we're just going to say the column is 6 inches in length 6 inches not 6 foot 6 inches in length and 1 foot in depth and just hit OK. Now you see all those parameters we added just flex that around the center point to give us reference planes to draw from. Alright so next I'm just going to put a shape in. 
I'm going to go to solid form, solid extrusion, and I'm going to draw in, let's just say, a diamond for now. And I'm using the reference planes to snap to. So I just drew a diamond. And that's going to be good for now. Say finish. All right, now let's go back to family types and make sure it still works. So let's change the length and the depth. Hit OK. And as you see, it flexed the extrusion we just made with the reference planes and the parameters we added. So you can always go back in and change this to anything. I'm actually going to go back to 6 inches and 1 foot. All right, so now we need something to control the height. To do that, we're going to go to front, double click front elevation, and we're going to draw another reference plane, just anywhere. It doesn't matter because you're going to tie a parameter to it. All right, and then normally the trickiest thing about creating a simple family like this is when you go to add the height parameter by clicking dimension, if you go to the bottom to start clicking off of two reference planes, if you'll notice you're not actually clicking a reference plane right now you're creating you're about to click a reference level so to get to the reference plane behind the reference level we hit tab one time and you see it changed so right now we're on reference point I mean reference level now it's reference plane so just hit tab once and then you click and drag up to the top one and click alright we're gonna right click on this dimension edit label drop down box add parameter height height is another dimension we're going to say OK. Alright, so you may be wondering why that didn't attach. It's because we haven't made it attach yet. To make it attach, we're just going to simply click the extrusion we created, drag it up to the reference plane. Now when the lock button appears, you want to actually say lock. Alright, and for the bottom reference plane, to attach the extrusion to it, we want to drag the extrusion up first, and then drag the extrusion back down, and click lock. All right, so now if we go in and test this family, test the height, so it's 10 foot. And we're going to say OK, and the height stretched to 10 foot. So just to see it in 3D to show that everything is working properly, we're going to change some of this around, 1 foot. We'll leave that at 10. We'll say 4 foot. We'll say OK. And actually moved it back out. So the point of this wasn't to show you that you can make a diamond column. The point of this video was to show you that you don't just have to work with what Revit says. You can do something completely your own. If I wanted this diamond to be a column, I can make it a column. Now the next thing is, to bring it into a project, you would just hit load into project, now at the bottom left. Normally you want to save this, so I would go ahead and save it. I'm just going to save it to my desktop for now. I'm going to say triangular column and then hit load in a project and it's going to load into the open project we already created and to get it to show up all I have to do is hit component because it was a generic model it's always going to load under the component tab same thing with trees, W flange is everything that's in there, triangular column and I can just place a bunch of triangular columns and then when I go to 3D there's my columns along with our nice logo Alright, so this has been a quick video tutorial about how to start adding parameters into your family so you can do more freeform stuff that helps you with your studio work or even work in general. So if you don't mind, go to arcdesignlabs.com, A-R-C-H, designlabs.com, and tell us what you think or if you have any suggestions on future family videos. I'm Adam Thomas, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.